Vegetarian for Life is launching a brand new podcast called Sound Bites. After over a decade as the leading authority on vegan and vegetarian care catering, V for Life has entered the exciting world of podcasting, meaning we can conveniently keep you abreast of all the latest developments. Expect interviews with key players in the care sector, care managers, chefs, wholesalers, and others who are leading the field while veganism becomes a staple on every menu. We'll be sharing our top tips and hearing what others are doing to ensure that they are giving the best care possible to their residents. We'll probably also be discussing our love for vegan food, so expect to hear all about innovative ways to veganize your menus without worrying about compromising on taste. So join us as we take a deep dive into catering for older vegetarians and vegans. And remember, Vegetarian for Life is the only charity of its kind in the world, so you'll be hearing exclusive content that you can use to make sure you're up to speed with everything meat-free. Episode 1 will be up very soon, and we look forward to seeing you then. Uh, hello and welcome to Soundbite. So this is the brand new podcast from Vegetarian for Life, uh, the leading authority on diet and healthy living advice for older vegetarians and vegans. Uh, today is the first episode in the series and uh, we're very excited to welcome our first guest. So our guest is the head of culinary and hospitality for Avery Healthcare. Avery are a healthcare provider that operate residential dementia and nursing care homes throughout the UK. Um, they're committed to providing the highest possible standard of living for their residents, and a big part of that is being a premium member of Vegetarian for Life's UK list. Um, Avery are also double award winners, having scooped up two awards at the Vegetarian for Life Awards for Excellence in Vegetarian and Vegan Care Catering in 2019. Um, so we're very pleased to welcome to Soundbite Simon Lawrence of Avery Healthcare. So, hello, Simon. How are you doing today? I'm very well, Kieran. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. And uh, thank you as well for coming on and joining us. Um, for those listening that don't know, uh, Vegetarian for Life have worked with Avery um, and Simon for some time now. So it's, it's great for you to, to come on and be our first guest. Um, so you're joining us at the end of uh, a, a kind of a long lockdown period. And the last five months have been quite a testing time for everyone um, with coronavirus, you know, impacting everyone's lives. It must have been a particularly challenging time for Avery, especially on the care catering side of things where obviously there's quite a high risk of contamination. Um, but you did get some good news in July when Debbie Rowley, who is the manager at your St. Giles Care Home, um, won the COVID-19 Excellence Award at the West Midlands Care Association Awards. Um, so that must have been quite a, a, a nice morale boost to hear some good news, despite how difficult things were at the time. Uh, yes, it's I, it's fair to say that the last five months uh, have been extremely difficult. Yeah, uh, it has impacted everybody: residents, family, relatives, staff, friends of staff, um, and it's been um, yeah, as you say, a, a very challenging time. Um, and like I say, for all of us, everyone in the care sector uh, has been through this. Mm. Uh, but what we have seen is how um, every staff have made a huge contribution. Uh, to not only resident safety, uh, but to their health, well-being. Um, and for a lot of the staff, their focus has truly been on the home. Uh, chefs have gone above and beyond uh, to ensure uh, interest, variety, and nutritional needs, diet preferences are met. Uh, they've all been absolutely inspirational, mm. um, thoughtful. Um, and one great example, like you say, is, is Debbie Rowley. Mm. Um, Debbie, the home manager at Aaron Court uh, for Avery Healthcare, um, very quickly established a unit that could safely meet the needs of COVID, of COVID positive discharge from hospital. Uh, Debbie was highly praised for making all of the expectations in relation to the mobilisation of COVID discharge to assess unit. Mm. Um, I think it's fair to say it goes without saying that the success has been down to a planning, management, drive and commitment and fully deserves uh, the COVID Hero Award. Absolutely, yeah. Well, I mean, throughout the pandemic, I think, um, well, we've seen some really inspirational stories. I know that there's a couple of care homes that we've seen where they had a no in, no out rule. So we had, you know, we saw staff camping outside care homes. Um, so obviously the pandemic's been, been, you know, awful, but it's really shown the, the dedication of, you know, care home staff like like Avery's, uh, Avery staff. Um, in terms of the way it's uh, impacted the way you cater for your residents, though, I mean, more specifically your vegan residents, um, has safety guidelines impacted the way catering for them with for people with dietary needs? I think when COVID-19 impacted, uh, we did have um, some robust systems in place, uh, which meant we were ready to respond um, 
and manage effectively the challenge of, of what would be lockdown. Um, because we had systems in place, we were able to modify these uh, to withstand the challenge uh, more quickly. Um, for example, uh, prompt purchasing of additional stock and planning mm. uh, with the suppliers um, ensured that our residents would continue to enjoy the best food um, and, and, and dining we could provide. Okay. Uh, contingency we put in place should any supplier be unable to deliver, thus that we could maintain the high percentage of freshly cooked food um, for vegan uh, diets. Credit to our teams, um, they simply kept calm and, and carried on cooking. Uh, they adapted to the new normal amazingly well. And we also ensured that all safety guidelines uh, were and are being observed. Um, social distancing and isolation uh, meant that only a few residents uh, take meals in the dining rooms, uh, with, the now, with the majority now enjoying room service. Um, a high specification room service uh, was already available and thus the only real change had been the increase in, in volume of such service. Uh, residents still have options at breakfast time from life to choices such as yogurt, cereals, vegan breakfast. Uh, lunch times continue to have menu options and regular meal times observed to retain the sense of normality. Uh, during the day, uh, the regular trolley visits um, around the home that delivers teas, coffees, um, vegan cakes, as well as hydration drinks, uh, vegan smoothies. Uh, it's a full dining experience to the room, uh, in effect. Um, residents' dietary, nutritional and hydration requirements are still being met. Uh, and we're still receiving the same levels of support and personalization. There's been no change uh, to the vegetarian and, and vegan options available for residents um, who either have preference or dietary requirements. That's great. And uh, well, we know obviously that you do an amazing job catering for, for your vegan residents anyway, but you know, it's especially tricky when um, you know, there's a, a pandemic going on as well and you know, contamination is, is a big issue. Um, for anyone who, uh, who might not be familiar, um, V for Life hold an annual award ceremony at the Houses of Parliament um, for those in the care industry. Um, and that's something that we look forward to, to every October. Um, and it's not just because we get to give out awards, but it's a great chance to meet some of our members um, and nominees and, and celebrate the hard work that they're doing, you know, such as Avery and, you know, the, the lengths that you go to to cater for your, for your vegan residents. Um, but Avery actually broke a bit of a record uh, in 2019. Avery were a double award winner at the 2019 V for Life Awards. Um, and that must have been a great feeling, especially given that you know, Avery is such a large chain. It must have felt great to have your, your efforts recognised at the Houses of Parliament. We were actually thrilled uh, to be nominated uh, in you know, several categories. It was, it was absolutely fantastic. Um, and I think it just shows the calibre of, of chefs that actually want to uh, come and work for us and, and and the caliber of chefs that we actually employ mm. at AA Healthcare. Um, to have two chefs that, that, that to be nominated, but then win first place and runner up um, was absolutely outstanding. And we were very proud of their achievements um, to then go on and win most innovative vegan dish mm -hmm. uh, was testament to Phil Mayer's um, wealth of experience, skill mm. and pure innovation uh, really um, yeah a, an absolutely thrilling day and uh, for it to be held at the house of parliament uh, was yeah was a, a real um, joy uh, mm. to to actually sort of attend yeah well it's it's a, well, like i say it's something we, we all look forward to every year i mean unfortunately this year things might be a, might be a bit different um you know that's something we're working on behind the scenes but um i mean yeah it was great for avery so um uh, we had phil mayer who won the most innovative veggie dish for his uh, quite easily veganizable lemon and white chocolate mousse tart with a strawberry puree and curled coconut double cream and then you also had champa mystery who won veggie care chef of the year um and then there's also uh, another runner-up from another nominee juan lopez who was a uh, nominated for the special recognition awards um but we actually spoke to all three several times in the lead up to the award and it was great because you could really tell how passionate they were about what they do um and how much love and attention and care they put into their dishes um are, are you still working with those three are they still with avery at the moment uh, yeah we're still working with all the chefs uh we're in constant contact um even more so uh with um the the a situation at the minute lots of mm. teams meetings uh, and, and, and phone calls so we're keeping constant contact um, mm. and just to go back to to Juan who was a runner-up for the, the Beulah Charity Trust Special Recognition Award uh, which he fully deserved mm. uh, he continues to inspire uh, and lead by example um, during the 
initial uh, lockdown, um, Wan uh, decided that he would stay on site and he stayed there for five weeks. Um, one, to protect the residents, two, to protect his family um, and, and, and mostly to ensure that um, during this lockdown, all of those residents would be would, would, would be would be fed, and he he, mm. he he worked really hard with the team, um, mm. and like saying sacrificed going home for nearly sort of five weeks, uh, which wow. is which is a, a wonderful example. Mm, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like we said before, you, you really kind of seen in these tough times how how much dedication people have to not just their job, but to the people that, you know, they're actually caring for, which is, you know, which is great. Um, and, but Birchwood Grange actually, interestingly, has one of the, the few vegetarian care culinary departments in the UK. Um, and obviously it's great to see veganism being represented. Um, can you tell us a bit about the department? Um, Birchwood Grange has a vibrant mix um, of residents and background. It offers a range of dining experiences uh, prepared by award-winning chefs now. Um, we have spices from East, vegan, vegetarian dishes, Gujarati dishes, Middle Eastern, Southern Europe, and traditional fare. Uh, the diversity is the home strength, and the community is both strong and nourishing. Uh, the Indian culinary department um, deliver a wide variety of, of vegan dishes. Um, these are heavily influenced by religion, uh, past, particularly in parts by the Hindu culture. Um, I think although food is from the Indian Western coastline, uh, where the shores are plentiful in seafood, that the giant culture makes the region predominantly uh, vegetarian. Mm. Um, ditches such as Taval Dal, a vegetable shark, eggless cakes, and a wide array of vegan dishes are always on the menu there. That's great. Um, I mean, veganism obviously is uh, is quite well publicised as, as being on the rise at the moment. Um, and quite interestingly, it appears it's the, the 50 plus demographic that are more likely to cut down on their meat intake. Um, and that must show in your own residence. Um, I mean, you, you've touched on this a bit before about, you know, saying, you know, room service and helping residents with vegan cakes and um, keeping them going with, with things like that. Um, can you tell us a bit more about how Avery caters for its vegan residents as a, you know, a set vegan menu or how does that work? So, so as a vegan, uh, coming to Avery uh, means nothing has to change. Uh, they can continue being who they are and how they want to live. Uh, a fundamental part of, of what makes an individual is their diet and we ensure that they get exactly what they need uh, with their diet and nutrition. At Avery, uh, we're very lucky to have you know, some great chefs uh, and the support of an experienced dietitian, Helen Simpson. Um, Helen Simpson, um, works with us uh, with developing menus uh, and gives some core menu guidance and what she brings uh, being an expert in the field or her field is great balance uh, nutrition color and textures to the diet and, and a wealth of knowledge uh, that she constantly shares uh, to our culinary teams every chef provides first class vegan uh, meals at all homes some homes as we've already spoke about having dedicated um, kitchens uh, due to residents' demand. Um, our menus provide the basis for ensuring residents are able to eat well and receive the nutrition uh, and the specific diet they require. Um, but the success relies on the skills of the chefs mm. in presentation, modification, and delivery of visually appealing meals. Uh, this is why at Avery, uh, we try to deliver the best and we feel we do deliver the best, uh, but we employ the best chefs, not cooks. Uh, operating in mm. sort of proper commercial kitchens. That's great. And um, well, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, planning or future planning for people can be quite worrying if you're, you know, you have a dietary requirement such as veganism. So it's, you know, it's great to know that uh, they can have the peace of mind that they'll be, be cared for every, you know, have their beliefs respected in, in the way that they should. Um, but Vegetarian for Life in Avery, uh, we've had quite a, a good working relationship over the last few years, um, which is why we were really excited when you joined us as premium members last year. Um, but obviously being a member is, is is much more than just ticking a regulatory box. Um, you know, we find our members are really forward thinking when it comes to the needs of their residents. Um, could you tell us a bit about why your membership is important to Avery? Uh, Avery Healthcare takes pride in as an example, being how we prepare our foods and adapt our menus to meet the needs of specific resident groups, whether vegan, vegetarian, Afro-Caribbean, Middle Eastern, Hindu, Muslim. And, and going into care in the UK should not mean that they lose part of their heritage or beliefs in what they eat or drink. As a premium member of Vegetarian for Life, 
And that shows our commitment to consistently providing a wide array of, of vegan dishes on our menus. Uh, at every person-centered care is not just about uh, the medication, but a resident's whole life experience. Well, the last question for you, really. Um, so this interview um, is going to be premiered at VegFest's uh, own online event, Summerfest. Um, VegFest is obviously the place to go for vegans for the latest food, drink, cruelty-free products. Um, and Vif Life often finds that planning ahead for later life can be quite a worrying prospect for uh, the people that we speak to um, at VegFest who are vegan. Um, so our last question really is, could you tell us what would happen if an older vegetarian decided to become a resident at an Avery care home? Um, would they be able to speak to the catering team first before any worries uh, or about any worries? Would they get to speak to the manager as well before moving to the care home? Is there kind of a process that you'd speak to them at the beginning to get an idea of their likes and dislikes? So the first thing that happens um, is that the chef will actually meet uh, the, the new resident in their room um, and listen to what they, they like and, and what they dislike. The chef will um, sit there and discuss their preferences. Um, and by doing this, the chef can sort of understand firsthand um, what, what needs are. Um, and like I say, I think sometimes people's likes and dislikes need to be conveyed firsthand mm. so the chef can fully understand yeah. um, what the resident may mean uh, when they talk about their preferences. Um, and by doing this, uh, this just adds to their quality of life uh, and ensures good nutrition. It's also a fantastic chance uh, for the chef to meet the new resident and sort of uh, put a face to the name as such. Well, uh, well, thank you very much, Simon, for coming on. Um, it was great to speak to you and, and kind of hear a bit more about the great work that Avery does firsthand. Um, obviously, at Vegetarian for Life, we, we know planning for the future can be quite a worrying process, especially if, if you are a vegan. Um, but if you're thinking about exploring care home options for a relative or maybe thinking about yourself, then it's definitely worth getting in touch with Avery Healthcare. Um, as we've mentioned, the whole chain are members of uh, the V for Life UK list, so you know that when it comes to your vegan uh, lifestyle choices that you'll be in good hands. Um, so if you need any more information, um, Avery have care homes all around the UK. Um, so you can head to their website at averyhealthcare.co.uk or you can follow them on Twitter at Avery Healthcare.